Now I'm starting this project off with the metal tracks, putting them together. I've never used metal tracks before. Uh, these ones are from R model. Uh, you take these probably cost, or oh, I think they did twice as much as the kit, so I guess that's the factor in if you want to use metal tracks or not. But so far they're going together good. I haven't had any issues yet. Just put the link in and then go with the pin. Pin's got the uh, head on one end and then just, just push them in with my tweezers. Some are a bit tight but I haven't had to drill any out or anything yet so uh, they seem to be good and that's your the kit tracks which is just a rubber track so obviously it's a an improvement uh, yeah I'm just keeping it even as I go using up the links so I've been <coughs> pushing along getting this uh, tank together as I mentioned in my bench update if you saw that I'm doing a diorama of a abandoned tank decades later in a jungle so my mind is racing with ideas but I have to put those ideas into practicality and do it so nothing special with the build because it's, like I said it's abandoned and it's, it will have not it'll be a rust uh, painted or weathered vehicle and I'm going to try bought these a while back uh, it's ammo MIGS rust series it's uh, U rust and if I'm not going to I haven't used it yet I've watched the YouTube video on it the YouTube channel it looks good and hopefully it will work how I want it to and before I apply it to that, I probably, I've got this old uh, Vickers or something, I don't know, and this is a, the Shelf of Doom. It's probably one of the only models that I've never completed. Anyway, I digress, so I'm going to practice on this, just a few panels, and try the effects and see if I'm happy with it. Same, but I, same as what I do a normal tank, I'll paint the wheels off so it can get it under the hull and everything all right uh, still got to put the grab rails on that so the actual model is i'm pretty sure it's like i think i saw a stamp size like 1970 something so it's pretty old but it's not too bad it's not it's pretty basic i guess for its time but i don't need anything fancy because it's just part of the scene uh so i mentioned jungle so obviously I'm going to need a lot of plants and trees. Now, if you've ever done a diorama and you've looked at aftermarket trees and uh, plants and leaves and that, it's quite expensive. Now I'm looking at, I've been searching for 3D files, uh, printer files. So I've started with some, I've been printing some Monstera leaves. So I purchased the files. I think there's five different plants. And the beauty of it is you can make them however big or small you want. So this is just some of, I've been printing up a whole heap of them. And I won't use them all. But I'm printing different sizes and I can incorporate what I want into the scene. And the thing with a lot of 3D files is a, it's meant for tabletop gaming, I guess, a lot of it. So it, I was worried it would be a bit cartoonish. or But these, I'm really happy with these. Uh, you can see I've broken some getting them off, but you just go with it. You can, Not every plant has a perfect leaf. You see broken leaves and ripped leaves in the nature. And what I do like is the thickness of them, the leaves. The, 
with paper ones, obviously they're the thickness of paper and they just, I don't know, sometimes they don't look right. Anyway, that's that. I'm printing some other ones at the moment, something different. So I'll show them if they work. This is, I've printed on a filament uh, printer. Obviously that's a palm tree trunk. Now, pretty happy with that as well. Uh, and these, so these are the leaves. This is how it looks after it's printed on the filament printer. There's all different sizes. You can see, again, that messed up when it was printing them. But again, go with it. Trim them off. Damage fronds. So I've trimmed that out. Obviously, so that was like that. I've cut it out. I still need to clean it up a bit. Uh, filament printers are a bit more messy than, as in the printing. They can be a bit, you get little uh, like spider webs and stuff on them. Anyway, so you can just flex them. It's pretty tough stuff, but if you really want to, you'll be able to bend that. I'll probably put it over something, bend it, but they can, they can bend down all right. And I'm going to just make up some trees. Just, uh, just trying things, you know. If it doesn't work, then oh well, it doesn't work. But I think I can incorporate this in. It looks all right. It doesn't look uh, too cartoonish or out of uh, like the thickness and that seems all right for the leaves. So I can work with that. I'm printing. So this is another file I purchased, and it's got. A whole heap of different size uh, trunks. There's single trunks, uh, the two trunks, and uh, triple trunks. And of course, you can change how tall you want them. Same as the leaves. This print was of the actual files. So I didn't change the scale. So that's just, I wanted to see how they turned out. Uh, so, yeah, happy with that. So, Pretty much, I've just got to uh, put all this on. I'm probably going to work out something here that I'll have the uh, bar broken in a couple of areas, something and just hanging off like it's rusted away. Uh, I'm not, I've got the main gun in, but I'll, I won't have machine guns, and I've left off the tools, the jack. And things like that because this my theory is it's abandoned it wasn't taken out in action or anything it's just been abandoned but things would have been stripped off it like the guns and tools so I'm just uh, working with pretty much this and uh, I did the metal tracks obviously I think even though they cost me probably two and two and a half times more than the kit I think the metal will work, look better, definitely over rubber anyway, and I'll probably put, well, I'll see how I go, I might put like one tracks come apart and it's hanging or something like that, but uh, yeah, on that kit, you, you get the figure, you can either have the whole body or the, just hanging out the top of the turret, the commander's hatchet. For its age, I don't, it's not too bad, I guess. Uh, obviously, resin figures would be better, but obviously, I'm not using the figure because it's abandoned. Anyway, so I'm going to keep pushing on here and see how I go. So this is my first experiment with the Urust powdered oxide. So, as it suggests, it's a powder. Uh, I'll show it. So that, that just the powder, you mix uh, water with it. And just mix it up and some older brush, don't use your good brushes. Give it a good mix. Uh, on the YouTube channel, they suggest you leave it for 10 minutes once you've mixed it up. Uh, I don't know if that's much good for me because 
10 minutes it'll evaporate and it's that bloody hot. Anyway, I put it on straight away when I mixed it before and you can see this is a result. So what I did was I uh, just painted down some uh, red brown and then I put a bit of orange, I painted the whole area red brown and I mixed a bit of orange in with the red brown and just randomly sprayed it. And then this half on the right, I put a flat coat of clear on it and the left, I didn't put anything on it. And you can see that it's a better result over just the paint without the flat coat. Uh, still all right it, either way it just seems to have a better result uh, apparently the longer you leave it the, uh, the on the YouTube channel it says up to two hours so it must keep going off although it looks dry to me I'm not sure I'm going to get any more effect out of that and I'll just show you again I put this brush and I just dabbed it on you just dabbed it on randomly I probably should have, I guess the more powder you mix in, the heavier result you get. But that that looks good. I'm happy with that. But that's not the end. you got these uh, two reactors, they're called. There's type 1 and type 2. And when you dab them over the top, they'll change tone and colour again. But I have to wait again for that to dry before I try them. So what? Don't take them out of the bottle, put them in a container, clean container, so it's not contaminated with anything. And then I just wrote the number so I know which one's which, and I'll see the results I get from it uh, as to which one I like. Alright, I'm going to try type 1 first, give it a really good shake, stir it up properly is what they recommend. So you can see there it's just it's just a bluey colour. I've not used it, so this is my first use. So what I'm gonna do is above that uh, that bar. I'll use the type 1 and it's the same type of application from there. Instructions just random. Ooh. All right, again, the white fat dry. And that's my printer, uh, the dryer, UV dryer going off there, if you heard that along. I'll let that dry, and then I'll do the Type 2, and then we'll have a look what it looks like. Alright, so you can see the top darker section was Type 1, and the lower section is Type 2. Uh, interesting, it's not really what... I see on their demo on their YouTube channel. However, I brushed uh, mine on these ones. On the video, they do the old get a uh, wet the brush and they're flicking it so it's spotting over it. So whether that will change, well, I guess it will change it because you won't be covering as much uh, area. But even just the uh, oxide result looks all right. So that's uh, pretty good. I'm going to so I've primed the model black and I'll spray it the red. And I'm going to change the shades again by adding orange and probably yellow or something just to lighten it up and change the shades over the vehicle. Just and then that should add interest to the when I do that change the tone of it. Uh, I've been printing some more. Again, I won't be using all these. I'm just uh, just printing some stuff off, and I'll use what I use. Think, see how small 
even that's on the filament printer. I was surprised I could get it that small. So that's shrinking that one down. And I did some smaller uh, leaves. So earlier I did that, and I've just shrunk some down. So these ones you'd probably be using more so on a, a smaller tree. I think they're, they're still too big for that size, but so uh, it doesn't take long, especially because it goes in height, they, they don't take long to do the leaves, so I just got to work out what size leaves I need for each tree. I've done some more uh, resin uh, shrubs and leaves, so we got some, they're not really palm tree leaves, but they're like the palm fronds, the ones that grow in the ground, just come out of the ground. Again, that, I printed them the size of the file. I'd probably, they're not, if you go in the vehicle, and it, they're probably acceptable. I might, I'll probably print some uh, smaller, but I don't think they're too big. And I did these, I really like these. So these little, uh, I forget the name, the tree. They got nice detail on the trunks and the uh, leaves. That they turn out really good for uh, resin printing. All these, the files for all this that I've shown you that I've printed, I get off. Uh, there's all the rest of my monsteras. So that's like I said, I won't use them all. I just did a heap of different sizes. I. Uh, Got the files. I use. Well, I like everyone. I look everywhere, but I get a lot of. All this was off my mini factory, and I, that's probably the main site I use. But like everyone, you use Colt 3D or whatever. You could search around till you find what you're looking for. Obviously, I paid for all these files, and I have no problem with that. Uh, it supports the designer, the artist who made the file. And they're getting something out of it and if it's something you need you pay money for it don't you so so onwards with my project